Welcome back to the Bentonville Beacon Podcast, where we're sharing stories and advice from the leaders and businesses sparking the rise of Bentonville, one of the fastest growing and most dynamic cities in the United States, nestled in the Ozark Mountains of Northwest Arkansas in the heartland of America. I'm your host, James Bell, and I am excited to share this two-episode bonus series highlighting the third cohort of the Greenhouse Outdoor Recreation Program. We'll call it GORP from here. In these two episodes, you'll hear an update from Phil Shellhammer, who is the Director of Business Incubation for the Office of Entrepreneurship and Innovation at the University of Arkansas and is responsible for GORP. Also, several co-founders from Cohort 3 of GORP will share about their companies and their experiences in the program. Let's get started. Let me introduce you to Phil Shellhammer, who is the Senior Director of Business Incubation at the University of Arkansas and a member of the Natural State Initiative Advisory Council. Phil, welcome back to the show. Yeah, I believe thanks, it's your James third Bell. time. It is my third time. I'm pretty excited. Excellent. We'll have to get you a, a t-shirt or something. I do. I do. I deserve one for sure. I think you're the <laughs> first one to make it to three. So um, shame, shameless plugs. Uh, Phil was the first show we ever recorded. Right. Um, you were on the one of the Northwest Arkansas Technology Summit mashup episodes yep. that are kind of like these. this one that you're watching with uh, the different GORP teams. And mm -hmm. then I'll call this third one GORP 3. So nice. the third GORP uh, cohort. Um, Phil, will you briefly remind the audience who you are? What should they know about you? Sure. Um, so I run what's called Business Incubation at the university. The main reason why I was hired there was to run what's called the Greenhouse Outdoor Recreation Program, which we can call GORP from here going mm -hmm. forward. Um, GORP is an incubator for startups and outdoor rec. All early stage companies, idea to launch, I like to say problem to launch, we try and mm -hmm. get them back to the problem, um, and helping people either through, or helping founders either through um, one-off kind of a la carte services of support, um, or a more intensive 12-week incubator uh, program, which we call a cohort. Excellent. Well, yeah. can you talk about how GORP has evolved? This is your third co cohort. How's yeah. How's it going? We're learning. <laughs> We're definitely learning. I mean, one of the biggest evolutions is just we've had more companies come in, right? We've been able to um, we've been able to fund and be able to get more companies into the program itself, um, which has allowed us to expand the cohort model. When you expand the cohort model, you get more interaction. You got more learning across companies. You have more um, ways for them to even interact and work with each other. Um, so that's been really great. Um, and then, you know, uh, the cohort model, it's 12 weeks of of training in some version or another. Um, and so we keep modifying, you know, that one didn't work as well. Let's go with a different course. Let's think about how do we think about this particular subject differently. And so we keep modifying that as we get feedback from the, from the company. So each time, just, I think we're getting a little bit better at telling yeah. each of the stories they need to hear. So. Yeah. You know, uh, used to run acceleration programs. And one thing I learned was, I don't remember what the exact number was, but somewhere around four companies was maybe too few mm -hmm. uh, because there wasn't enough interaction. Yeah. But then when you got up to that five, six, start getting up to seven or eight uh, range, you start getting a lot of interaction between companies. Yeah. It becomes much more meaningful. There's this critical threshold. That yeah. And I'm certain there's probably a top level to it too. Is you yeah. get too many in at one time and it'd be too much to kind of handle. But I think, you know, we had seven last uh, in GORP two, if you want to call yeah. it that, right. And, and we have six in this one. And, and I think those are, those are pretty good numbers. So that's great. Yeah. So, what's new or where's this thing going um where is it going so here we're learning a lot right so we're learning a lot about how to help the companies right now um and we're also learning that a lot of our companies and what's been awesome is all of our companies are still going or all the GORP companies are still continuing forward but they need more help kind of post cohort right sure there's still i mean there's still some need capital support and some need you know, other kind of partnership uh, help and support. Um, and so you can start to think about it as, the, you know, there's the incubation side and then there's the what's next. And so what we're trying to figure out now is how do we keep helping? Um, now we still have the a la carte services mm -hmm. and people can still come to us and they do. Like we've had continual conversations with many of our GORP cohort companies. Um, but really what we're focused on right now is how do we, how do we continue to help them kind of post launch? Now they got launched, now they're bringing in revenue. Now they're starting to get some traction but there's other needs they have there too, right? And so how do we give them the right network or the right support um, to help them continue to grow? So that's been a big, big focus for us lately, at least. 
Awesome. Well, I, yeah. I can't wait to see what you uh, what you come up with. Trying. Uh, so the focus of this show, uh, Phil, is we're you know sharing or the focus for each of the uh, cohort members for Corp Three mm, yep. <laughs> that that come on will be to talk about their companies. So can you share about uh, I guess in general about companies uh, from the past cohorts, and then maybe give a couple of examples sure. of progression that's been made sure I'm, i look forward to hearing the uh the six current ones and kind of what they tell about themselves they're they're doing really well right now um but it's fun to look backwards too right so we've mm -hmm. had 11 companies come through the cohort and in one and two um and and we've had so they're all going concerns they're all continue to go forward um we haven't heard of any dropping off each one of different stages right some people are still working through their prototype builds um but we've had a couple really great uh launches and builds uh, uh, the first cohort um, there's, um, you know, Lakaida ropes be a great example, right? Mm -hmm. Lakaida uh, just announced recently that they've got their first kind of brick and mortar store. They put the metered rope inside of pack rat here locally, Wonderful. which they're very excited about. Um, and they continue to go strong as he's expanding his kind of product offering as well. So he doesn't just have ropes anymore. He has other products as well. Um, trail pilot, which back when we did the cohort mm -hmm. was called trail tours. He changed the name to trail pilot, but trail pilot continues to grow, um, as well. Um, as they're getting more and more communities bought into the model of a audio tour of your mountain bike rides. Um, so Mark's doing a phenomenal job of working through that. Um, so that's been a really great success. And then in our last cohort, um, uh, oh my goodness, Yonder Adventure Company. Oh yeah. All right, one of our more local uh, mom and pop shop businesses is all about touring on the Buffalo River in Man, the time's coming. They got their schedule all booked up for the spring. Hopefully, um, we've heard a lot of it been filling up for them, and um, and they are they're just they're about to roll through. I think a really great spring for them, which they're pretty excited about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. man, I, I love it. I keep uh, following what's happening with all the all the companies. Encore Bike Reynolds is another one. Yeah, yeah, uh, that comes to mind. Uh, and shame, you, you know, I'm. If you've watched this show before, I love my shameless plugs. Completely biased. Uh, we've yes. named one, two, three companies so far that uh, you'll find in uh, past episodes. So go check those out. Um, let's pivot for a moment sure. before we uh, go to our last question. So two questions left. Mm -hmm. uh, this first one is, what is the Natural State Initiative mm -hmm. Advisory Council all yeah. about? Yeah. So um, so our, our governor um, in the last... Oh, six weeks ago, something like that, right? Decided to create what's called the Natural State Initiative, right? Um, and the idea behind the, the Natural State Initiative is to bring together a group of people to really advise her on how best to support economic development for the state through the amazing assets that we have in outdoor recreation. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, her, her husband, Brian Sanders, um, is, uh, is in charge of this group. He pulled together 17 people from the community around the state in different areas that understand outdoor recreation in different ways um, to really advise on a lot of very high level topics um, but hopefully to be able to advise the state on hey, here's the opportunity right my my hope right is that i was brought in to kind of think through the entrepreneur's version of this right yeah um, because if we're going to drive economic development there's a few ways but one of them is definitely grow our own companies or attract really early startups to come into our state and so i think my focus on this piece will definitely be around how do we help support and continue to support our current uh, startups and the ones that are going to be coming in the future. And obviously there couldn't be a better person to put in that role. So Thank congratulations. You. I'm Thanks. really glad that you're there. Okay. Last question. Uh, this is a hashtag because Bentonville mm -hmm. question. You've heard it before mm -hmm. and I know you're full of these stories. So tell me a story about uh, or a moment in time that, that happened here in Bentonville that could, you feel like could only happen here or describes the essence of this place. Yeah, I mean, I'm only gonna fall back to the entrepreneurship world, right? So we've had we've had close to 150 ideas come across my desk in the last 15 mm -hmm. months I've been in this job. Um, and 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 sometimes you get founders that come and they throw an idea at you randomly and then they walk away, you never hear from them again. Well, recently I had like we had this group come to me nine, ten months ago. And they kind of laid out what they wanted to do. And we talked about it for a while and gave them some, some advice, some thoughts, some tools that we use, all the stuff we kind of start people with. Sure. Um, and then they left. I didn't hear from them for quite a while. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, they kind of gave up on whatever. It's not going to come back. They came back the last two weeks and they laid out a, a, their model of what they want to do, which is totally different than they started with. They took wow. the same tools we went with. They were laid out exactly what they wanted to do and where the business wants to go, right? I won't give the details now, but maybe they'll be coming in the future, right? And they're like, this is where we want to go. And so here's, here's where we need help now. And right. And immediately I was like, oh, I know exactly 
which mentor here or who in my network could help here or who, like because Bentonville will just jump all over this as yeah. soon as we introduce them to X, Y, and Z person because there's so many people here they just they're just willing to help and they just want to jump in and so I've already sent some of those emails some of those are already going back and forth you're starting to see those connections happen it's so exciting to see that our community has embraced over and over again entrepreneurs these guys are super early stage right they have nothing yet but the community wants to help them and, and to help push them forward. I'm already starting to see that, which is super exciting. It's great. I love that about Bentonville. Oh, no doubt. Great story. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you, Phil, for hopping back on the show. Uh, look forward to showing you all in the uh, next little bit the rest of these stories from the current cohort. Absolutely. Thanks, James. Let me introduce you to Mike Burton and Clayton Woodruff, who are co-founders of UNCLE. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank yeah, you. we appreciate you having us, James. Yeah, it's good to hey, be here. Hey, no problem. Um, will you share briefly about Uncle and your co-founders and how y'all got together? Yeah, for sure. So Uncle, actually an acronym, Universal Network Control Lot Company, um, started with myself and then Clayton Woodruff here. He and I are both MBA students. We've been there since the beginning, both you know avid mountain bikers. And then we also have Peyton Lenz, who's our CTO, kind of came in later in the game. I guess he wanted to make sure we had a vetted idea before he, you know, joined the team. But I'll kick it off to Clayton. Anything you want to add there? Yeah, so I'm the chief operating officer. Um, like Mike said, we, we started riding bikes in the MBA program about, say, a year ago. Uh, and then we started in the new venture development program in the end of August. And that's when, you know, he, he's full of ideas. Uh, this is one of many. And, uh, you know, I was in the mountain bike world for a long time and I was like, you know what, this, there's something here. So, uh, when, when we kind of got together, we were like, let's, let's pursue this lock idea, uh, amongst, you know, many others that we're, we'll do hopefully at some other point. So nice. Uh, tell me about new ventures development. What's that program all about? Yeah. New venture development. So of course, at the end of the executive MBA program, MBA program, whatnot. So takes these MBA students who really have, um, you know, an interest in entrepreneurship and it gives you that opportunity to start the business, you know, with the support of the community, but there's very few opportunities where you get to start a business and you have kind of a fail safe and some scaffolding around you. And so that's how I would describe new venture development it really is that puts the community at your back and kind of guides you. So you're not making a lot of those same, you know, mistakes that a lot of startups do. Yeah. And so it's Sarah go forth and, and David Hitton, our professors, they've really helped us along just uh, a lot of mentorship, a lot of hard times, just working through our pitch competitions that we've gone to, which we've been to several of those now and have a couple coming up. So, yeah. So, and that program's through the university of Arkansas. Yes. And so uh, tell me about, uh, yeah, you've had some pitch competition success we'll call it international pitch competition <laughs> success. How is, uh, tell me about a couple of those wins. So absolutely. I'll, I'll start off with our, our first one. We went to the IV pitch comp in London, Ontario. That was in January. I uh, didn't really know what to expect. First time I've done it. First time Mike's done it. Uh, the three of us had gone up there and, and we ended up winning the whole thing. So it was actually $20,000 Canadian, sure. uh, which was great. So we had good experience there. And then we literally just got back from Winnipeg, at the uh, Stu Clark pitch comp last weekend. I'll let him tell that experience a little more. Yeah, definitely great opportunity just to vet your idea, put it out there in front of, you know, some very esteemed uh, panels of judges. So from every industry that you can think of, when we were at Ivy in uh, Toronto, London area, a lot of VC judges there. Then we shifted over to Winnipeg for the Stu Clark New Venture Championship. Um, completely different competition there where you have different judges, not a lot of venture capital folks focus, but mainly just in industry specialist. And so we had the opportunity to put our idea out there, got selected, you know, in the top four out of 16 teams that were competing, landed on third. Um, we lost, you know, that's the way that I look <laughs> at it. But I will say, if you're going to come in third to anyone, then it should be to, you know, companies who have these really great ideas that are out there saving, you know, babies or, you know, helping other individuals with their medical issues. So um, great opportunity. Um, really helped us come along significantly. Yeah, it is so hard to win against companies saving babies uh, or <laughs> or that have the the next big cure for cancer or, or whatever. Like I've sat on those judging panels and when you're looking at the two, it just becomes it, difficult. 
I, you know, for me, I would have voted yeah. for them also. It's yeah. we have a great product, you know, with a, a viable business in front of it. But again, when you have the opportunity for that level of social impact, um, I, I would take the same thing. But it has <laughs> been a great experience for us, and really added fuel to the fire as well as some money, so that we can kind of yeah. continue to develop the, the business. And we've got uh, actually two more coming up. Governor's Cup is actually this Thursday. It's virtual, mm -hmm. and then Heartland Challenge, which is here local, here in Bentonville at the Ledger, uh, which we're very excited about that one. Very cool. Well, I'm not judging that division of governor's. Okay, Cup. good. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are, yes. no, nope, <laughs> I'm judging a different division. <laughs> so, um, well, that's great. So y'all met at the university of Arkansas, the executive executive MBA program, uh, did MVD. Now you're in the greenhouse outdoor recreation program uh, as well through the University of Arkansas. Can you talk about that and how that program has uh, been beneficial to your company? Yeah, absolutely. So Phil Schillhammer, director of the GORP, he was the first person I shared this idea with. I think I was actually the first person to share an idea with Phil in his new role. And so, um, you know, I've been very intimate with that program and kind of track the success and the different cohorts that are going through there. And when we decided to pick up and move forward with this idea, I knew that we had to involve GORP in our story. Uh, we always want to have that opportunity to reflect back and just, you know, have the GORP right there at the start. But since we've been in there, I think we went in thinking, you know, this is going to be really helpful in different ways. And where we found a lot of the value are the other founders that are in the program. Um, you know, it gives you the opportunity for people to vet your idea that are in different industries, but also those that are closely related. They're tapping into their networks to support you, um, though we were doing pretty well on our own. I think the GORP has really launched us ahead just through those connections and everyone, you know, hoping that that you achieve what you set out to do. And, and really setting us up with uh, key mentors. You know, we mm -hmm. have some really great mentors uh, that we're working with and they've they've helped us along. And you know, they're from various backgrounds, which just kind of helps again, better idea and, and make sure that we're headed down the right path. And honestly, just thinking about things that, you know, you wouldn't normally think about, right. We're, we're intimately involved and close to our own project here. So it's good to think outside the box, even when it comes to just design elements, like little things like that. So, yeah, you bet. Um, you know, I've always found, I used to run some acceleration programs and, and I've always found that it's always the, you would think it's, all the things they bring to the table. Yes, it's important to help you think through a bunch of stuff, but the classes and stuff that come with these programs, you would think would be one of the most important parts. And it always turns out to be the mentors and the relationships yes, that you make with the <laughs> folks uh, around you to help propel you forward, especially if you have good mentors that fit the program and fit you on. Absolutely. So on. MVD is a lot yeah. like that. It's the new venture development. You know, we, we obviously get value out of the classes. There's a lot of things we're learning there, but that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, time that we get with uh, Sarah and David, especially throughout the pitch comps is, mm -hmm. you know, invaluable. You do about four weeks of work in a weekend. So, yeah, you bet. Well, as we wrap up here, because this is the Bentonville Beacon podcast, <laughs> I have a question for uh, each of you. Um, if you could, I'd love to hear some stories. This would be a, think of these as, as hashtag because Bentonville stories. Uh, in other words, it's say a, one of these stories is a moment in time or something that happened, a full blown story that could only happen here or maybe describes the essence of Bentonville. Yeah. I'll start because I know Peyton's a lot longer winded. Than what I, I said, see, I still call him <laughs> the wrong name. Even though the third, our third founder's not here, yeah. I still call him by the wrong name, yeah. but it's totally okay. yeah, Clayton <laughs> and Peyton, it's not my fault. Right. Yeah, no, right. Um, but you know, I think uncle, no matter how far we get, will always be founded in Bentonville. And the reason why I say that is this is where the idea started. It was at a Bentonville farmer's market. I blame it on my wife. We were riding in, you know, to grab some vegetables. We both have ridiculously expensive bikes, far more than what we should. And my job is to maintain the bikes. Her job is to bring the lock. She forgot the lock. And if she wouldn't have forgotten the lock that day, then who knows if uncle would be here right now because stopping at that farmer's market. And even though I trust Bentonville, yeah. I don't want to leave my bike out. And so I thought, man, why is there not an opportunity to lock my bike, pay for the time it's locked and then come and retrieve it later. And then that's where uncle came, you know, that's where the idea came from. So that's the little short and sweet Bentonville story. For yeah. Me. I have more of a journey in, in my story just because, uh, I'm from here originally from Fayetteville. <laughs> Grew up here and, you know, been mountain biking since I was a little kid. I mean, was literally riding out on Kessler when it was technically illegal. 
the nice. trails out there. Uh, and so I, I moved away for a long time living out in Colorado and, you know, nobody ever came up to Benville uh, in the, in the earlier days. I mean, there was not much here aside from you know, Walmart basically. And, uh, then they started to really develop the biking infrastructure. Uh, actually after college at going to see you in, in Boulder, I moved back here to help build the first slaughter pen trail system and then moved back to Colorado for another you know, eight years. And then in 2015, I, I decided to, you know, was, was kind of done with, with Colorado for a bit, decided to move back here. I uh, came back and, and really was just blown away at the level of infrastructure and the trail systems. I mean, it's, you know, we, my wife and I moved here from Fayetteville just a year ago and are just in love. Um, so, you know, being in the cycling industry for over eight years, it was just really cool to see that progression. Uh, and then, whenever, you know, him and I got together, it's, it's even better to be able to develop a, a, you know, product like this here. Uh, when we go to these pitch comps, especially international, everybody still is like Arkansas, like, what's that? <laughs> uh, and, and I don't think they quite realize that this is just a breeding ground, especially in the cycling industry to develop you know, new products. And this is the ideal spot for us to launch something like this and to really not only proof it, but just to get we're getting so much traffic from all over the country and the world and they'll be able to see, you know, our locks hopefully here soon on all the Australia's racks. <laughs> awesome. That's yeah. fantastic. Well, thank you all. Those were great stories. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, uh, Mike and Clayton for coming on the show. Yeah. Thank thank you. So much. Thanks James. Yeah, I really appreciate you. it. Let me introduce you to Tracy bird, Ironman athlete and co-founder of B Royal. Tracy, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Well, will you share with our audience about yourself and your co-founder? Yes, I will. Um, I um, am an Ironman athlete, have done um, seven full Ironmans, one of which was, well, I qualified for and raced the Ironman World Championships in Kona, Hawaii a few years ago, which was very surreal and Mm -hmm. extraordinary event to be able to be at. Um, and then I've raced a bunch of half Ironmans, but didn't get into triathlons until I was later 40s and didn't do my first Ironman until I was 50 years old. So there was a, a big excitement and leap to, to do what I did. But anyway, and then um, the co-founder um, has been a lifelong friend. We actually met in college. His name is Andy Jacuzzi. Um, he himself was an Olympic kayaker and raced pro level cycling as well. So, you know, knows his way around a bicycle. Um, he spent most of his career in the branding and marketing arena. Wonderful. Um, will you talk about B Royal and what's the problem that you saw that you decided we absolutely have to solve that? Yes. yes. Who do you solve it for and how do how, you do it? How to do it? Um, well, it goes back to if you train for seven full Ironmans, which is 112 mile bike, mm. each one of those, and you're trying to qualify for a world of championship event, you're obviously spending hours and hours and hours on a bicycle. I spent a lot of those by myself and I spent a lot of those with friends who I, I rode with. Um, but during that time, obviously had lots of opportunity to talk about how did it feel on our bicycle and what was, what were we thinking? And, you know, food was usually one of the things that we discussed, but, but we also talked about, man, we're uncomfortable in these shorts and shifting around on the bike seat and, this hurts and that hurts and the um so that that is all where all of the basis of it came and then kind of pre-covid it just sort of hit me i'm like you know there's another way to do this cycling short thing mm -hmm. and um again it that's when it struck me so i literally got out scissors and a piece of paper and a pencil and just started drawing out what i thought this thing should look like and it kind of then it sort of went on the back burner for a, a little while and then um ironically i came across some information about gorp and phil shellheimer's name and it said hey if you want to you know come talk to me about your idea email me so i mean i thought well i have nothing to lose so i sent phil an email and went in sat down and talked to him and he said I don't know why someone hasn't thought of this before. So that sort of leapfrogged me. But the problem is, is the discomfort and the irritation and the chafing that ha happens mm -hmm. from the cycling pad itself. And what B Royal is doing, we have designed a pad that is going to eliminate that and allow you to ride more comfortably, 
perform better and ride longer consequently. So that's that's the solve for it. It's redoing. It's not about the thickness of the pad. Mm -hmm. It's more about the shape of the pad. Cool. Well, I'm glad to hear that because I don't have to ride very far at all. Before you've got problems. <laughs> I've got exactly. Some right. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, we've done a lot of talking to folks and it's like, well, how do you solve for it? And folks are just miserable. I mean, they're literally like, well, I've tried this bike seat and I've tried that bike seat and this pad and these shorts and this short and I shift on my seat and I've tried Vaseline and all the different butters uh -huh. and chafing creams and all of that sort of thing. And nothing is really solving the problem. It's helping, but it's not preventing it. Yeah. Well, as a fairly new mountain biker, uh, people will keep telling me, well, quit, quit sitting on the seat. You're not supposed to be sitting. Oh, right. And and I have to believe that that I'm not sitting on the seat long enough <laughs> to, for, for the seat to be the problem. Right. So I'm glad right. I, I hear that. That's a very good point, actually. Yeah. Um, will you talk about your experience in GORP? Uh, so far, how yes, that's going sure and what you're getting out of it. So like I say, I went and talked with Phil and he said, hey, you know, this sounds great. Like, I, I'm not, a, I don't know why someone had thought about this. I think you should apply for this 12 week program. And um, I said, OK. And so it came around time and I applied and um, was accepted and then um, went to the first meeting. And um, then I decided to fall down 20 stairs oh. um, and. Uh, I'm going to leave out. I broke a lot of stuff. I'm just going to say it that way. You name it, I pretty much broke it. So I wound up in getting one of those little rides in that helicopter down to the trauma unit in Little Rock. Long story short, didn't get to do the first round of GORP then. They were gracious enough to let us reapply, obviously knowing we were going to get in. So then we reapplied. The program has been exceptional. It's it's not only a place where you're getting to learn new things that you just simply don't know. My degree is medical technology. I know nothing about branding and marketing and, mm -hmm. you know, how to make a pattern or any of that stuff. So it's been very helpful in being able to connect us to the right people. Um, we have three mentors and mine are exceptional. Um, they have different backgrounds, which adds to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, we're provided an intern through the university my intern, of course, is exceptional, and we give her projects and um, research things, and we meet once a week, and she says, here's what I found, and we get to kind of talk about it. So it's it's free time for yeah. that to be provided to you where someone who's working a full-time job and trying to create a new business and all of that wouldn't have time to do that. Um, but, yeah, and then the camaraderie among the, the folks who are the businesses that are in the corp with me we have a great time together. It is a lot of fun and we feel like we're in the boat together. And, um, you know, we, te we cheer on each other on, we tease with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've learned, I've learned from the other people in the cohort as well as the people who've come and presented. We've had lawyers, branding people, um, of course now I've gone blank, but each week we have a speaker who's come in and provided some expertise and, a few of those weeks, it's Phil because he's mm -hmm. an expert. So that's a little bit about it. That's great. I mean, look, being able to build a company alongside other founders is really a fantastic deal, especially it's, when you get to see them or hear from them every it day is. or see them every week. It, it's actually, I mean, it's an unprecedented opportunity to be able to have this kind of, you know, knowledge and exposure given to you so quickly and allow you, I, I mean, obviously it's why it's called an accelerator because they are literally accelerating you. And I, because I did get to meet the group that I was going to be in last time, I've also stayed in touch with them and it's been really cool to see how far along they are still going and what they're, what they're accomplishing. So it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. In the Venture Intern Program, you mentioned your intern, give a shout out to your intern, by the way. Yes. My intern is amazing. Um, Falua. Falua. <laughs> yes. All right. Had to pronounce Excellent. it correct. Had to get it straight. She's, she will be graduating as a double major in marketing and apparel merchandise. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Yes. Well, that program, I've uh, had one, two, three interns so far in that from that program. And first of all, just interviewing the yeah. slate of candidates that right. they provide oh, I bet. is hard I to bet. figure out I bet. who to hire right because uh, they're all good yes they're all they're all fantastic right and then 
there's a grant that already pays for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a program. I may get the numbers wrong here, but not, these are the numbers in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, started off with 20 and then it doubled to 40. And now there's wow. 80 every semester that are available to entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or entrepreneur support mm -hmm. organizations. Mm -hmm. And it's really a fantastic program at the University yeah, of Arkansas. Yeah, for sure. Corner. You know, and back to that, um, the money that we have been provided through the entrepreneurship program. Um, I've already spent a third of mine and that was spent on applying for a patent. So I actually yeah. have a patent pending. I wouldn't be that far along if I had not been in this program. It's great. I know it's wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, we, I've got one question left. Oh boy. That question is tell me a story. And what I'm looking for here is a hashtag because Bentonville story. And so this story is either a moment in time or is a story that could only happen in Bentonville okay. or describes the essence of this place. Okay. Um, this probably, pres this, I'm going to say this sort of touches on all three of those categories. Okay. Um, uh, when I first, um, I, I had done one Ironman and living here in Northwest Arkansas and then decided, you know, okay, oh, that was pretty cool. I'm going to do another one and picked up a local uh, magazine, saw an article about a guy who did coaching. I thought, well, there he is. I'm just going to give him a call, called the guy up and um, get, so he starts coaching me and we became great friends, but he coached me for probably seven or eight years. He got me to the world championships and um, I'm sure there's a lot more gray hair or less hair of because of it. But anyway, but one day he says to me, well, um, I'm coaching the the first winner of the first Ironman ever. What? <laughs> and I'm like, what? He said, yeah, he lives here. And I said, you're friends with the guy who won the first Ironman ever in Hawaii? He said, yeah, it's Gordon Holler. And so Gordon and I have become great friends. We have this great bond because we've both done that event. But yeah. but uh, for folks who don't know, this guy is the real deal. And if you, you know, Google Gordon Holler, there he is on the beach. They're about to race the first Ironman championship, if you will. I mean, literally the first event ever. And, um, I mean, he's just been a wealth of knowledge and a great comrade and a huge proponent of the sport and cycling and the whole community but who would have thought he lives here <laughs> wow that's amazing you know and that's becoming a thing um and there's yeah. a couple of categories of of folks where that's becoming a thing one is with athletes uh and the other one seems to be with ceos or, mm -hmm. or leadership of, right. of tech companies right 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 uh, yeah. that have been sort of just relocating here yep. to this area. Well, this and guy, so when you go to the world championships in Hawaii, they have all these banners up mm -hmm. and his pictures on it. He gets invited every year to go back. Um, he can race when he wants to. He doesn't have to race if he doesn't want to. He's actually going to race this year. He's training. Um, but yeah, hashtag Bentonville Gordon Holler. <laughs> there we go. Well, great. Thank you so much, Tracy. Yeah, that was you're great welcome. Story. Absolutely. You Thanks bet. for coming My pleasure. On sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap on this bonus episode. If you enjoyed it, check out the other half of the Gort bonus series. Thank you to Phil Shellhammer and the founders who were able to join the show to share about their companies and their experiences and for giving us a peek into some of the newest innovations in outdoor recreation. And thank you to you, our Bentonville Beacon audience. You know, without you, this show would not be possible. If you will, take a moment, share this episode with your friends and colleagues, and keep coming back for more to discover Bentonville's leaders and their businesses, and more about Bentonville and Northwest Arkansas, where you get more of what you want and less of what you don't. Check out all of our episodes at BentonvilleBeacon.com and on most podcast players, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. And of course, hit that subscribe button. Thanks. We'll see you next time.